late, late night arrival last night into Apollo Bay. We're at the Big Four Caravan Park and today we're heading out into what is Bass Strait, not even the Southern Ocean because a whole lot of giant Southern Bluefin tuna have moved into town. I've grabbed Lee McDuffie, my shop manager, Simon Rinaldi, my good mate from Red Hot Fishing Charters and today we are chasing what is potentially some of the biggest tuna that this country has to offer. I just need to get to the shop, get some coffee, get some food because oh, I'm seriously tired. boys. GPS says we are here. We are here is just off Cape Otway, the lighthouse in there. And this is one of the most spectacular pieces of the Australian coastline. Back behind us, the 12 apostles and all those sorts of places that most people regard and know of on the west coast of Victoria. We're at a place called the Nine Mile Reef. Boys, Simo, you've been here. Lee, you've been here. Yeah, a little bit. Yep. Chasing school tuna, but today it is about the jumbos. We've got Simon on board. He owns a charter boat, but he goes, can I have a day off and let's go fishing? So what is the plan, boys? Well, as we heard yesterday, there's quite a few uh, good fish over the 100 kilo yep. mark call here yesterday, Lee. So I think um, we're in the area. There's a bit of bait showing on the sounder. So we'll get the lures sorted out and um, see if we can get a nice spread out and get amongst that. That's it. It's all about finding the bait, finding the birds, just like any form of game fishing. Apparently, I'm up on strike first. We're hoping it's small because super duffy, you're in for a jumbo today. Great. <laughs> Let's get to it. Like handbags and shoes to my wife, Rach, skirted lures are just that for me. And when it comes to game fishing, they will cause many an argument on what is the biggest and the best and gonna catch the fish. Now, boys, here's a little selection. What are we putting out? Uh, baby hardhead first for me, Lee and Lumo. Beautiful, Can't that one's off. caught me a couple over a hundred. Simo, what do you think? Anything there to tickle your fancy? This one here. Yes. This is a good one. Little Marlin Magic Flyer. That is called Big Dog That Colour and it looks a lot like a souri. And you get plenty of souri here. When it comes to attaching the line to the outrigger, which is that big pole there, this is the tag line, it cuts out any drop back. And when I attach the rubber band to this, I love this Dacron cord system. I go straight through the rubber bands and then we just make a half hitch in that, pull that loop tight. When the fish bites, the bands will break, but if we need to unrig it or get the lure in quickly, you just pull that cord, the whole lot slips out and you can wind that lure in nice and quick. finding the structure and here off of Polo Bay there is some beautiful big reef systems and that's what attracts first of all the bait and then the giant bluefin. Here we've got beautiful big rises and ridges and big walls along the edge of the reef. The current's pushing from the west heading to the east. It bunches all that bait up in those areas and those big blueies they just run back and forth. Here we've got the sound you can see it's just starting to edge up now and there's bait scattered all over the top of it. You find these honey holes or these prime areas where the bait's stacking up and a big predator like a 100 kilo tuna is going to be right there somewhere eating that stuff. So I think we're going to stay here and work these reefs. I'm going to use the GPS, we're going to pinpoint the high points and go from spot to spot to spot. We're staying here. 
See the explosion past those birds. So we're talking two o'clock, 500 metres. See it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's more behind them. He's a whopper. He's a big banger. That is a whopper, man. How's that? We just knew this was going to happen. We've worked this area and worked this area and worked it. Lunch time, how many fish, Simo, oh, do you catch when you're eating lunch? Yeah. And I'm just like, no way. And I saw this huge splash, fish hit the rigger, missed it, and I'm like, damn, we missed him. And then you just saw this submarine just come charging up behind this and eat it. Clarky was up the front on the bow, dropped the GoPro over the side, but this does not matter. Duffy's just nice and calm. He's clearing the gear. Simo's got the boat ticking forward. We knew we were going to get the bite. That was some of the best action I've seen. Mate, but the first bite wasn't even that big, Simo. It was just like a little splash. And I'm like, oh, is that a schoolie? How's this? He hasn't even woken up yet. Duke, can you have a little bit to port? I just wouldn't mind getting that line really tight. There we go. You tell me which way, Luke. Uh, just more to port, mate, I reckon. Just yeah. maybe drive off him a bit while we get this bucket on. Righto. Bit quicker, dude. He's sort of coming at us. Just taking off a little bit quicker because the fish started coming towards us. So just take off the fish just to load up the rods, keep it nice and tight. These bluefin, are, um, they're the masters of coming straight at the boat. If you give them any slack at all, the hook can just drop out nice and easily. So keep as tight as we can. It's important to keep the nice bend in the rod and you know that you're nice and tight to the fish. As soon as the rod tip starts to sort of come a bit straight, just tick over forward in the boat and keep a bit more pressure on it and stay connected. It's really important. Probably just drive off him a bit, Sim. I'm gonna ditch this jumper, mate. I'm heating up. Just trying to keep from getting too hot. That sun's popped out and it's actually quite warm. And don't be afraid to lose line. Simon's just driving off this fish while we're getting sorted. And the best thing is to keep that line as tight as we can. That's what we want to hear. I think so, mate. Thank you. I've never caught, and I'm not saying we've caught this guy, but because we've got a long way to go yet, but I've never caught a big bluey in nice calm weather. This is good. And the gear I'm using is my favourite gear. Silver Makaira 50, 50 pound mono. And for a big fish like this, it's awesome because you've got pulling power, but it still takes a lot to land these guys. Got the black magic bucket on. I haven't gone to the harness yet because I haven't got to that point where I need it. We're just letting this guy run around, burn himself out a bit. Simon's gonna use the boat to beat this fish. I find it really interesting, Lee, how these things get in real stalemate. You get halfway into the fight and they'll just dog it out down deep. They make it so hard for the angler because they're just so big and powerful. Yeah, they just okay. dog it down deep. So you have to keep driving off them just that little bit and it helps plane them up. It yep. makes it just that bit easier for the angler. Right. And it actually helps them get line on there much quicker than if you just had a, a boat sitting dead still. And Simo, do you find that every fish is different? Yeah, a lot of them can be. 90% um, of them come up onto the surface after the first, say, five or 10 minutes, they'll come up quite high. Yep. And they, it's like they're a bit phased out of what, what's been going on. Oh, he's gone. That's tuna fishing. Mm. Had the colour, he rolled on his side, yeah. and I saw him, he just, Shook his head. he just flipped over. Shook his head. Yeah. That's right, we'll get another one. That's all right, let's go. It's still early, boys. That's, um, that's fishing, but... Um, it hurts. You know, it hurts, but we're going to release a fish. Yes. It's a beautiful day. We got the bite. The hardest thing in fishing is getting the bite. There's a lot of water mixed in with 
with the tuna, we know that. We're in the area, it's still early. Um, you know, the lure did the one. job, he shook his head, pulled the hooks, that's the way it goes. Let's get another one, Simo. We'll go again. there's a tip I can give you, it's to always watch your spread. You don't want to just throw those lures out there and hope for the best because most lures will swim best in certain positions and a little bit of tweaking can mean the difference between catching the fish of a lifetime or going home empty handed. Right now on the long corner, the lure I've got out, it was swimming beautifully before. Earlier it was a bit rougher and it was just smoking along quite nicely. It's calmed off, the sun's come out. So I'm gonna swap over, same color, but to a different sort of shaped head and a different style of lure. This guy loves some calm water. It's a little baby flyer. And a lot of people might be surprised to think that a 100 kilo tuna, which has got a mouth like a bucket, feeds on stuff like this. It looks like a baby souri, and that is one of their favorite foods. So he's gonna get swapped over onto that corner. I'm gonna tweak him, get him in the perfect spot. The other thing I'm gonna do, I had the gold X wrap out on that corner. It was all cloudy. Gold's so good in the cloudy conditions. This sun's popped out. So I'm gonna go straight to this silver job with that red throat. It looks a lot like a really good bait fish of a red mullet or a pilchard. And it's a great lure for in sunny conditions. It's all about tuning into what's going on. Swap those lures, get him swimming and right. You'll catch fish. We'll pop this guy in. Always place your lure in too. Don't just throw it. You don't want it to tangle. I'll drop this back, get him in the right spot. It's all about getting on that pressure wave, isn't it, Yeah, Duff? right on the right wave and making sure it's swimming right. What do you reckon, mate? Further back, what? Maybe even on that, that next pressure wave, Lou. All right. What we're talking about is the wave that rolls up at the back of the boat. And if you get in the right position on the face of that, the lure pulls down, gives a very good window of the fish coming up behind it to see it and eat it. It's all just little adjustments. The anticipation right now is ridiculous. We've driven about 35 kilometres to the west. There's a big patch of reef here, and it's like driving into a zoo. You get to this area, there's gannets and terns, seals and dolphins everywhere, and there's some serious bait marking up on the sounder. If you're a tuna, this is where you're gonna be. It's where the food is, the seals and the dolphins are making everything work. They're pushing the bait, the tuna are there just getting an easy feed. We're very, very confident here right now. Look at that, seals. Gannets eating bait. I'll just get this dash wrap out of the way. Here we go. Get that one gone, I'll go round, Lee. Hey. Just get that one out and I'll go round. We've just had the big bite. We're in the area, the gannets were there. Simon said, here we are boys, this is the best looking patch for the day. The gannets just started bombing in really hard. The wind's picked up, we are right on the tide change. And just like any form of fishing, tide changes are when it often happens. A dead sea with no light can really change in a matter of minutes. And this is just all turned on in the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it's crazy. And a really good tip, as long as that fish is running and as long as we're going forward, the other gear is going to follow the boat, so you don't have to stop. And the last thing we want is slack line. All right, Simo, I'm on the way in with this. No worries, pal. Just take your time. Everything's all good. How's that? He just wallop that baby hard that. Yeah. Got a bit of string out there, pal. Yeah. Not a bad thing, though. We've got a lot of line out, but there's a lot of pressure there, and that will help keep that hook in. You can see Simon's got the boat moving forward because the worst thing you can do is have Lee trying to wind while we're trying to put the bucket on. He'll stop, you get slack line, and you can lose that fish. How's that, Lee? We, we just called it, didn't we? I said, this looks perfect. That's it. This is our chance. We had gannets instead of turns working. The gannets are a number one bird when you're chasing these barrel big bluefin tuna. Yep. The turns are very good for the school fish, but when it comes to the jumbos, the gannets, and the, they're the first gannets we've had all day, and um, they were working properly. Yep. And the bait was pushed up because the gannets didn't have to come high in the air. That's what I noticed. They, they were bombing in on an angle, which told me that the bait was pushed up. Our first pass through, and bang, we got the big one hooked up. Too good. I am so stoked because the 
boys said, Lee, you're up on strike first. It's the new Evo, the new rig. You've got to catch the fish. But for me, and I know for Simon, this is a pretty important moment because Lee, Super Duffy McDuffy, is on his first jumbo tuna. And that is what fishing's about, getting your mates onto the fish of a lifetime. We're gonna try and tag this guy, slide him in the door, and fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything crossed, let him go again. Time to get Duffy seriously sorted out here. I think this is a pretty solid fish. So it's time to get serious, get Duffy sorted in for the long haul. He can clip himself in there. That's one. And you're in. You're right, mate. Yeah, that's good now. Thank you. All right, just keep that rod pointed straight down the line. We're going to get up on this guy. Just waiting for Lee to sort of just be. Just want him to settle down a bit. And... Yes, he's not. I don't want to go at him yet because he's uh, just starting around, but he's still got a heap of string out, hasn't he? Oh, he's got loads out, mate. Yeah. Loads. I'll start kicking over towards him and get, get up on him a bit. Line, mate. Yeah. This is jumbo number how many for the Red Hot Charters this season? Well, this one's. Uh... Number 10, if 10. we get into the boat. We've had a, had a lot more. We had, yep. uh, had that good one on earlier on. Yep. And uh, I was trying not to count my chickens before the hatch, <laughs> but he, uh, we, we, uh, we were going to release him, but he got away before we wanted him to. That's but that's it. the way it goes. It is. And like Simon's day off, he goes, Lee, let's go jumbos. Yeah. Let's go jumbos. And like, do you want to stay home? Nah. <laughs> so day off, comes out in my boat, and this is what we're doing. Because it is, how many times have we said it? Fishing of a lifetime in Victoria, two and a half hours from our front doors. Yep. And um, as close as, what are we here, probably four kilometres off the coast, we're only in 65 metres of water. Yep. It's just amazing, it really is. And it's a world-class fishery. These fish aren't yep. small fish. And it's a trailer boat fishery. Yes, that's right. Thanks, Lee. It's hard to believe it's about 12 or 13 degrees here, but you heat up really quick, and that's about one of the worst things you can do. A, you'll end up seasick, but B, you just burn out because you're too hot. Fight's not over yet, but we're certainly a lot closer. Everything's ready. I've got the tracing gloves here. They're wet, they're ready. I can just grab the leader. I'm not gonna wrap on this because it's only 130 pound black magic tough trace and that is what you want to be using for these giants. The tag pole's ready. Now the plan is to let this fish go. So when we get him up, hopefully we'll give you a good look at this fish paddling along in the water, get the tag in, and then from there we're gonna open the door and we're gonna do our best to gaff him in the top jaw and slide him through on a big padded mat give you all a look really quickly, and then shoot what is a very, very big fish back out the door. That's the plan anyway. There he is under the surface there. Oh, he's big. He is big, Simo. Watch him, watch him, he's coming around under the boat. Dude, watch him, he's just there. Yeah, mate, yeah, I've got that. There she is. I don't know if the camera's getting that, but she's just ticking along next to the boat. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> look at that, Lee. That is Southern Bluefin Tuna. Back her off, Simo, just a little bit, just in gear, man. Look at that. I'm gonna try and edge her up, get this gaff in that top jaw. Like that. I've got her, boys. We've got her. That's why she fought so hard, Simo. Oh. That hook in the cheek. Now, I'll tell you what, yep. I'll just pull the door out. Oh, what a beautiful oh, yeah. animal. Beautiful animal. Now. We get our mat. I did this once before with a fish of about 120 kilos and it worked quite nicely. We just make that mat nice and wet. Get her head up. What do you reckon, Simo? Yeah, all good. Grab the gaff duff, pull, pull, pull. I've got the mat, we'll bring the mat with it. We've got it there, nice and That is a big fish. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. It's very, very hard. We've got to do this really quickly. I'll grab the tag pole, pop that in there. Super Duffy. Well done, pal. Thanks, boys. Good work. Easily awesome 100 fish. kilos. Well done, Simo. <laughs> Thanks for some great boat driving. Boys, let's pop her back. Let's do it. We can't keep her out for long. She's done too good a job. Now, I reckon spin around, boys. Head this way. 
You push stuff. Go. She's there off. she goes. Woo! <laughs> boys. Well done, well, boys. Stuffy. The stuff, mate. Mate, Woo! what a beauty. The fish of dreams. That three or four kilometres off the coast of Victoria. Giant bluefin tuna with great mates. Fantastic. Oh, well done, boys. Home time.